morning and welcome to the Rock here in Pinetown. Uh, it's good to see the faces this morning, some old faces, some, some young faces. And not a lot of pretty faces, but that's all right. We can, we can, we can handle that. That's fine. Look, what I want to talk about this morning, we, we know about the problems and the troubles that's been going on um, in the Middle East and, in fact, in Ukraine as well. Um, but but the, the, the way God works is that the, the Bible is central towards the Middle East, towards Israel. And so this morning, I, I'm not talking about the war or the warfare or anything like that. We, we see enough of that on television. But I do want to bring up a couple of, of, of issues. But before I do, um, I, I would like to say that we're all human. And a couple of priests in, a, in America, in New York, they wear their black outfit every day with their white collar. And they decided, you know what? We would like to go on a holiday and take off these clothes, put on something that people don't know who we are, and we could just do whatever we want. So they thought, well, that was a good idea. So they did that. They, they flew to Florida, and they were going to Miami. And <clears throat> they went into one of the stores, and they bought all these fancy shirts, and these Hawaiian-type shirts, shorts, and sandals. And off they went to the beach. And as they were on the beach, it was a pretty lonely beach, few people on it. But there was this one lady, this one young, blonde-haired absolutely stunning, beautiful girl, and they, she came up to them, and she was walking past them, and she said, good morning, Father, good morning, Father, and they looked at each other, and they looked at themselves, and they thought they'd left something on that would give them away, and nothing. So they went back to the store the next day, and, and, and they got more clothes and changed, and the next day on the beach, same girl, and you know what girls with long blonde hair, you know, flicking their hair back. And Good morning, Father. Good morning, Father. And they said, oh, she's, how does she know? So one said to her, excuse me, madam. Uh, she says, yes. He said, how do you know that we're priests? And she says, don't you recognize me? I'm Sister Alicia. <laughs> Anyway, let's get on with it. What I decided to do, because of my right hand being sort of partially incapacitated, I wasn't able to write anything. Um, but what I'd like to say is that, that God has got a prophetic timeline. And it doesn't matter what anybody says. His prophetic timeline is real. The new year of of Israel, officially, they call it Rosh Hashanah, which starts next Wednesday. But God said to Moses, he said, when you're leading the children of Israel out, he says, this was in the month of Nisan. In other words, run about our April. He said, I want you to start the beginning of this month as the beginning of the year. So the beginning of the religious year, in Israel is around about April. Rosh Hashanah is the c civil New Year. Now, why do they have a couple of New Years? Well, we have a couple of New Years as well. We have got the financial year, and the financial new year end, financial year beginning, and we have our celebrations on, on New Year. And the, the Jewish people don't celebrate on Rosh Hashanah it's actually a mournful time. It's a time when they are about to go into what's called the 10 days of awe. Now, God started off with his prophetic timeline with Passover. Passover, and then the following day, Passover, there was the, the unleavened bread. Now, Passover was when the lamb was slaughtered, when Jesus was killed. That has taken place already. Then the next day was the, uh, the unleavened bread. That is bread without yeast, without sin. And Jesus was that 
that bread, the manna from heaven, without sin. That has happened. The following day was the, the first fruits where they would cut the harvest of the first fruits of the, of, the, of the corn, of the barley it was actually in April, and they would take it to the temple and they would, they would wave it towards the Lord. And Jesus, according to Paul, was the first fruits from the dead. So he was the first one to be into the heavens. If the first fruits were, were accepted by God in the temple times, he was accepted Jesus. And because he accepted the initial harvest, he accepts the whole harvest. So each and every one of us is part of the harvest because Jesus is our first fruits. And he is the one that we believe in. Now, every day, every week, the, the Jewish folk, they read portion of scripture. And their portion of scripture is set out before them, and it's read throughout every synagogue throughout the world. After the first fruits, then came the, the waiting period of what the Jewish people call Shavuot. We call it Pentecost. That was the pouring out of the Spirit of God. That's when the, the, the Peter stood on the steps and tongues like fire came onto them and they were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit because Jesus walked around for 40 days after his resurrection, and he met more than 500 people. He told the disciples, you wait on his ascension. He says, you wait in Jerusalem for a further 10 days, which is the 50 days where we get the word Pentecost from. And he says, the power will be, he says, I must go so that I can send the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, or the spirit of holiness, because that's what God is. He's a spirit. God is not a body. He's a spirit. He's a spirit of holiness. He says, I will send the spirit of holiness to give you power to go and minister and preach the gospel. And that's what he did. And that's what's all of this has happened. So the next thing that has to happen is, is coming up to what the Jewish people call Rosh Hashanah. A Rosh Hashanah uh, is not mentioned in the Bible. The word in the Bible is Rom Yom Teruah, which means the day of the blast. And but on Rosh Hashanah they do blow the they blow the trumpet every day, leading up to Rosh Hashanah. And on the first day of the Jewish month of Tishri is Rosh Hashanah, and that's the beginning. Rosh means head. Shana is year. It's the head of the year, the beginning of the new year. So. This, was, this, was, this is important. It's important to us because the day of the blast, remember what, what the Bible says, that when he comes for us, he will come with a shout and with a blast and a, a tr a, with a trumpet sound from the archangel and we will meet the Lord in the air. Okay, that is what we call the rapture and that's what we are expecting to happen next. When Jesus talks in Matthew 24 about wars and rumors of war, we've seen all that. There'll be, there'll be uh, sort of pestilences. We've got all sorts of things. We have COVID. Now we've got monkeypox and dear knows what else we're going to get. And we're, we're getting all of those diseases coming through. He's, he predicted all of this. But what he did say that when the sun is darkened in and, and, and the sky, but he said that will only happen after the tribulation period, which is after a seven-year period. And according to the book of Daniel, that seven-year period, it will be, it's called Jacob's trouble, but it'll be, it'll be a tribulation period. The first three and a half years will be a, a minor tribulation, and then the second three and a half years, the Antichrist obviously will be involved at the beginning. We will not see the Antichrist because we will not be here. We will be taken to meet the Lord in the air, in the clouds. So we, we, that is what we're looking for. That's why we've got to be instant in season and out of season. And when, when I phoned Lynn last week, um, it was very late on Saturday, and I told her I wouldn't be able to make the church on Sunday. And she was very good. She says, then I better start preparing now. And um, I thought she was going to give me a thousand words. And I thought... Uh, my answer to her would have been, you've got to be instant in season and out of season. 
but uh, I didn't have to do that. So this week is the, 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 Sh the Shabbat, is, is the Sabbath before Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah starts on, on uh, the 2nd of October, which is Wednesday. And then we have the 10 days of awe. The 10 days of awe for the Jewish people is a 10 days of repentance and of reflection. And if anybody's done anything against them or if they've done anything against anybody, they go and make it right. Because they know after the 10 days is Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is the Day of Atonement. That was the day when the priest went into the Holy of Holies and sprinkled the blood on the mercy seat. Now, the Kippur is, is the Ark of the Covenant. In fact, it's called a Kippurit. And the seat of that is called the mercy seat. And that's what he sprinkled it on. We believe that Jesus is the mercy seat. And it's his blood that washes us. The Bible tells us it's his blood that washes our sins away. Now, in the Jewish times, uh, they, they, they believe they have to do that every year. In, our, in the Bible, it says that once and for all, the book of Hebrews says he did it once and once only. There is, there's no second time. You don't have to get saved and salvation over and over again. And salvation, the way the Jewish people look at it and the way we Christian people look at it are, is different because we believe in a personal relationship with, with, with Yeshua, with Jesus, with the Son of God. They believe more in the nation being, being saved as a, as, a, as a national salvation period. And that's what Yom Kippur is, is all about. So for those 10 days, they've got to be very good. And I used to say, if you ever want to borrow money off a Jew, that's the time you actually do it because they, they, they're very good over those 10-day period. In the portion this week from, that they read throughout, and I'm going to explain a, a little bit about what we're going to get from the Old Testament. Now, we got a lovely reading this morning from Isaiah 53, which is not, not often read in the synagogue, in fact, if ever. And, and Isaiah 53 tells us exactly about Jesus. And as we heard this morning, when, when Lynn read it out, at what he went through, who he was, he was a man of sorrows, he was, he was a, play, a man that was, he wasn't, a good-looking guy with, with lovely blue eyes. And it says that he was made and so that he was not to be desired. So he, but he was human. And, and he came along in the form of the Son of, of God and Yeshua, and who was totally human. He stepped into the place of man. And he died as a human being. He died as a man. And therefore, he died totally innocent. The same way as the lamb was slaughtered, he became the lamb of God and was innocent. And, and when he led his life down, he wasn't executed. He led his life down. He says, I will lay my life down as a sacrifice and I will lift it back up again, which he did. So we believe in the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the, 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 the readings that they have in the synagogue is called a Parsha. And what they do is they read a bit from the Torah, which is the first five books of the Bible and written by Moses. And then they have called what is it, the Haftarah. And that is then scriptures from either the writings like the Psalms or the prophets for like Isaiah. And this week, it, it, one of them is the Old Testament, and it's about Moses. And he says, he warns and he predicts them that they mustn't be obstinate. They, they mustn't have idolatry. They, they must be obedient to God. Moses is now on his way out. He's, he's, he's going to die soon. And, and uh, the amazing thing of, in, the, in the Bible is that when he died, he wasn't sick. In fact, the Bible says he was of good health and his eyesight was perfect. And then he died. So uh, you take it, you know, we get sick and we think we're on our deathbed. But that God, when, you're, when your time is appointed, that is the time 
that God has made an appointment, and that's the time you won't be late. Okay, so, or you will be late, whatever you, way you want to look at it. <laughs> okay. So Moses said, he said to them, he said, but however, he says, Israel will, will survive. Now, this is what he's saying. Israel will survive as a nation, and, he, and they would return to the Holy Land. That's in the Bible. That's what the scripture says. They did return to the, that prophecy was fulfilled in 1948 when they returned to the Holy Land and they became then the nation of Israel. And of course, the following day, the, uh, the Arab people um, uh, started a war against them. And they've been warring and, and been at battle ever since. But God has, he hasn't forsaken them and he hasn't replaced them. And they start off with their, their half Torah with Isaiah 61, verse 10. So I, I find that interesting because Isaiah 61, verse 10 is, is very good, but they skipped the Messianic verse, which is Isaiah 61, verse 1. And you'll know that this comes from actually when Jesus went into the synagogue and he opened the scroll and this is in Luke, uh, Luke four, chapter 4. And, and, and he, he said, but in Isaiah 61, the prophet said, and he's prophesying now about what Jesus is going to say. He said, the spirit of the, of the sovereign Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. That's the poor in spirit as well. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. In other words, to be a comforter, to proclaim freedom for the captives. Thus, are those who are captivated with demonic uh, habits or, 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 or pressure, and to set the captives, uh, the, uh, freedom for the captives, set the captives free. And I remember doing that once in a, uh, when I was ministering in Westville Prison, and I said that he's come to set the captives free, and I got a big cheer. And I had to explain myself that I, I, that, that wasn't the reason. Uh, and to release from darkness for the prisoners and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Okay, then it continues, but Jesus didn't continue. He then rolled the scroll back up. What they did was they, they would have a scroll. The only scriptures that they had was the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, which is our Old Testament. They would open the scroll. They weren't allowed to point with their finger on the scroll. They had to use an instrument called a yad. A yad in Hebrew, it means hand. It's a long little stick with a little hand on the end, and they were allowed to use that. They weren't allowed to touch it um, with human flesh, and they're still not allowed to do it today. But if we read on, we see that the, the reason he didn't r r continue with the, the, the verse is because this is the, the second part. The first part was his coming. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. And he was there now to start to bring the kingdom of God into place and to proclaim the year of the Lord. Then it goes on to say, and the day of vengeance, that is what has to come yet of our God and to comfort all those who mourn. So those, that, that's the, the messianic which they... The Jewish people, they skipped that and they went to a, 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 a further um, scripture in Isaiah 61. They went to verse 10. But what God wants to give us and what he has given us, uh, when we accept Christ as, as our Savior, when we know that we'll be washed in the blood of the Lamb, we all have got eternal security. We've got etern we're eternally saved. We, we know that, that, that the Spirit of God is there. It's within a, you, don't always, you don't feel it. It's, it's there. It's, it's, a belief. It's, it's called faith. And people say, well, I didn't feel much. Or some people get emotional and, uh, and when they get saved. Some people get emotional when they get baptized. Some people know that when they get baptized, they get problems. I usually warn people when I, before I baptize them that you know you've now set yourself up as a uh, as a target, <laughs> and uh, I've got some people here who can actually bear that out. 
but uh, it's one of those things. So Jesus has come along, and then he wants to clothe us. He wants to give us new clothes. And that's when we come to the, the reading of, the, of the, the, the portion in the scriptures in the Haftarah. In verse 10, 61, verse 10, he says, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in robe, a robe of righteousness as a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest. I mean, that you would think would be coming from the New Testament. This is the only scriptures that they had. And when the Apostle Paul referred to scriptures in the Bible, he's talking about the Old Testament. They, didn't, they were busy writing the New Testament. So you see where we can get Christ right in the Old Testament. It's there. God has blinded the, the nation of Israel in order that the Gentiles may come in. And when the Gentiles come in, the end of the Gentile period will, will end and then God will then deal with the nation of Israel, and he will, will deal with them in, in, a, in a manner that will bring them back. Jesus said, I will not return to Jerusalem until they say, blessed is he that comes in the name of Adonai, and blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. He wants to give us new clothes. He's going to give us, he's going to give us robes of righteousness, which is, which is absolutely fantastic. The other thing he's going to give us is a new name. God changed Abraham's name from Abram to Abraham. He changed Sarai's name, his wife, to Sarah. What he did was, in God's uh, name, the, 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 the letters that we've got is yod He vod He, which is Y-H-V-H. That's yod He, He is in God's name. So he changed Adam's name and he put letters of his name in that, in Abraham's name, in Abraham. Abraham, so God is entwined with Abraham's name and it's entwined with Sarah's name. So therefore, the old woman who was about 90 years old was, had the, the spirit of God and she was able to give birth to the son of promise. And the son of promise was Isaac. So God gives us a new name. And when he gives a new name, it's a new identity. Because the name of God, we, 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 he's got so many, so many names because it's, he's got, it's his character. So when, when we look for the name of God, we look at the character of God and who Father God really is. And when Jesus came on this earth, he came and he came to show us what the Father was really like. And how he, 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 he was displeased with the, some of the religious fraternity, like the, some of the Pharisees he was displeased with. Other ones he was fine. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Um, and Nicodemus came to Jesus by night time. So he gives us a new name. He gives us a new identity. When he changed Jacob's name from Yaakov, Jacob, um, he changed it to Israel. Israel means that he has, that he was actually, the translation is, he was honest with God. In other words, the, when he was wrestling with the, with the angel or with God, he was, he was, he had told 20 years before that, he had told his father that he was Esau and he got the birthright. He put a goat skin on and, and his father was blind and he touched him and he thought that what the hairy guy was his the other son. And, and he told a lie. And when he came to God, he was honest because the, the, the God said to him, what is your name? And he said, my name is Jacob. And, and God said, no longer, I'm changing it to Israel. So the sons of Jacob, Israel, became the Israelites. And, and that, that is a, a new identity. And the new name we get in Isaiah 62, verses 2 to 4. And there we have, the nations will see your righteousness and the kings your glory, and you will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow you with a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of our God. No longer will they call you deserted 
or name your land desolate, but you will be called Hezapah and, uh, and your land Beulah. And, and God has then, he's, he has not deserted Israel and he has not deserted us. And because of, of the, the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, the promise that God gave, uh, the, the, he said, I'm going to give a new covenant, Jeremiah 31 through to 34. He says, I'm going to give you a new covenant. And the new covenant is going to be not inscribed in stone like he gave Moses, but it's going to be inscribed in your hearts of flesh and in your mind. And that was the new covenant. It was inaugurated on the cross, and Jesus inaugurated it. And then he said, Lord, Father, I commit my spirit into your hands. And at the end of the day, that's what we all will do unless the rapture comes and we get, we get taken up. Because the Bible says that those who are dead in Christ will rise first, but those that are alive at that, that time will join them in the, in the sky and meet the Lord in the air. We find the new name given to Christians as well. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 17, when the, one of the letters to the church, churches, the church of Pergamum, and we, we see there that God gives... A, he, say, he, he gives them a, a pretty scolding at first. And when I'm talking about the church, you, you will get churches and you'll get people in churches that are not all Christians. Um, but those who are born again have got the salvation and have got the spirit of God. So when he gives the letters out to the seven churches, that's the seven that represents the, uh, basically the whole of, of, of uh, Christendom and the, the seven being of perfection. He then said that I will give you a white stone with a new name on it. And that new name only you will know. So we will be getting a new name. So whatever our name is, when we are in Christ, when he returns and when he takes us back up again um, to be with him for the marriage supper of the Lamb, we will come back with him at his second coming, that's when he comes, and that's the second part of Isaiah 61 verse 2, is he will come with the vengeance against the nations that are against Israel. Now, Ezekiel 38 and 39 is a war that's been predicted, and it's, it's going to be involving Iran, it's going to involve Turkey, and it's going to involve Russia. We see how things are developing today. Today is not the Ezekiel War. What we're seeing, uh, although Iran is heavily involved in uh, supplying its proxies, in fact, Russia is also supplying uh, weapons. And um, we will see this is like a, a catalyst or a precursor to, to that, that war of Ezekiel 38 and 39. So God wants to change our, our name, and he wants to, he wants to, thirdly, what he wants to do is he wants to give us new love and, and, and uh, to, to have more intimacy with us because, w to be honest with you, we don't really pray enough. We need to pray, and when I say pray, we need to concentrate and, and pray for, and pray expecting. In other words, pray with hope. Um, your prayers with, with prayer, with supplication, and, and say, Lord, this is what I want, and this is what I need, and God knows your needs, but he wants you to ask for them. He wants you. He doesn't want you to just to take him for granted. He wants you to get, get down and not necessarily on your knees. I mean, when you get to my age, you get on your knees, you battle to get back up again. But it, you, you, you pray and you pray to the Lord and you say, Lord, this is what I want. He wants a new intimacy. And it comes from um, Isaiah 62, verses 1 and 2, which is... Um, I've just read to you, the Lord wants to give a new name. He wants, to, he wants to clothe us the way we would clothe our children. When we would take our children, and, and especially when we have school time and, and we've got to uh, buy clothes. And, of course, the kids today, even when they get older, they, they don't want, I mean, when I was a child growing up, and if I wanted something that was a brand name like Nike or something, like that, I could forget it. You know, I got something that was, in those days it was made in Hong Kong. Um, today it's made in China. Um, but that's not, no, the, the children today, they seem to want the best. And as parents, that's what we want to give them. We want to give them the best. And 
One of the reasons Isaiah states that the Messiah is a man of sorrow, which we heard this morning, is acquainted with grief. He, he, Jesus knows about your grief. He knows about what you're going through. He knows about your ailments. He knows about your sicknesses. He knows about your problems, whether you've got problems at work or problems at school or problems at home or problems with friends or problems with family. He knows about it. He's, he's a man who's acquainted with grief because sometimes we, we, we get a lot of grief from, from uh, the outside world that seems to come and push against us. And we, Paul described it in a perfect way when he said, we fight not against flesh and blood about the powers and the principalities because there's a war raging on that we can't see, but we can be we can feel, we can feel the pressure, we can feel the emotion, we can feel where we just wonder uh, how much longer can we take these things, how, how long can we go, but Paul does say, although we're pressurized on all sides, we're never going to be crushed, so we, and one of the reasons that we're not going to be crushed is one of the names of God is Yahweh Shema, Yahweh Shema means that there is, uh, uh, that God is there, God is, is, is here. God is there for you. It goes along with Emmanuel, God with us. Those are the words, that, those are the words from, the, from the Hebrew Bible, that God is with us no matter what. He's not far away. Some people say, you know, I pray, and I don't think my prayers get out of the room. They don't have to get out of the room. God is with you. He's, we, the Christ is, is, uh, is in you, and God is with you. And, and no matter what you're going through, no matter what depression, no matter what grief, no matter what is happening to you, God is with you. And he knows exactly what you need and what you want and what's best for you. So I just want to finish by saying that we see what's going on in the world. We see what's going on in the Middle East. And we know that there's, there's, we don't know how it's going to happen. Uh, we, we don't know what uh, were the invasions. We know that the head of the terrorist organization was killed in a bombing raid on Friday. We know that there are innocent people that, that have, have died. We know that terrorists have died. But we know that God is in control and God will have his way. So no matter what we do or what we say, just remember that you are under the protection of the Holy One of God. Amen.